Hello Internet, Seth Skorkowski, and today we're going to be taking a look at a really cool scenario, and that is the driver for Cult Divinity Lost. It appears in the Adventure Collection Screams and Whispers, but Helmgast also has a free PDF copy that you can download. The adventure is short, it's only four pages long, and playable in only a single session. But two things really stand out about this adventure. First, it's a one-on-one -on -one adventure, meaning that there's only one player and one game master. I love one-on-one -on -one scenarios. I've done a whole video just over that topic, and I especially love them for horror games. It really drives home that feeling of isolation. And second, most of the adventure is improvised. Instead of being a written out module with a fleshed out plot and characters and location, the driver is a toolbox to help guide both the player and the game master through doing improvised adventures. And it is fantastic. We've played this adventure twice now, and neither time were remotely the same. It merely opens with the player character driving down a desert highway, and through a series of questions, we determine who it is that the character is running from and why, what they have to their advantage, and what it is that they see ahead of them. The module then offers suggestions and ideas about fleshing each of those answers out. The character itself can be made one of several different ways. You could go through normal character creation, which can take a while, or assign the attribute points from a pool as they're needed, sort of emerging during the course of the adventure, or you could simply just give them a plus one in all their attributes. Now one suggestion that I employed when I ran this is allowing the player to raise one attribute by a single point for every major challenge that they overcome, uh, which when I ran it I chose to be once every time they had uh, completed a major scene. Now while this scenario is mostly improvised, I do have a few suggestions for some changes as well as some tips as a game master who has success successfully run this adventure. And I'm Jack the NPC. I'm here to give it to you from a player's side of things, as I get to be the master of my own destiny and choose which horrible thing is gonna try to kill me. But before we go any further, I must warn you that there will be spoilers. So any players in the audience, please stop here. But send your game masters this way to see about running the driver for you. But if you keep going and you spoil yourself, well, that's a waste of good suffering. You're fleeing through the Nevada desert night in an old muscle car. The AC is busted and hot desert wind rushes in through the windows. The fuel gauge is on empty and you expect the engine to die any minute now. What are you fleeing from? A heist gone wrong? Some cops died and your partner Glover is lying unconscious in the back with an untreated gut shot. Your former boss and her henchmen. Sometimes you gotta take what you can get. This time the choices were limited. So you took your old boss's five-year-old daughter, Destiny, who's in the back seat. Or an enemy from your past. You thought you'd killed her, but she's back for revenge. In the passenger seat beside you is your spouse, sleeping after being dragged out of bed in the middle of the night and forced to flee with you. Uh, a heist gone wrong, and my partner Glover is bleeding everywhere. What did you steal? A huge diamond that we stole from the Natural History Museum. A mysterious buyer has offered us a fortune for that thing. What do you have to your advantage? A 45 pistol with a half-empty magazine of custom bullets? An heirloom World War I bayonet. It's said that bad things happen when you stroke it with blood. Or someone waiting for you out in the desert. A buddy out in the desert, he can make both of us a fake ident- Wait. No, I've got the 45 that's got half a magazine of custom-made bullets. Finally, just now, coming up ahead on the highway, you can see an old hotel long past its glory days, a retro gas station with a small store and diner, or a small house painted in a withered sage green. I see the house. Maybe there's some way I can get Glover patched up there, and then we can steal a car. Okay, the car coughs on its last few drops of gasoline and dies and rolls to a stop. The house that you saw is just a little bit up ahead, moths circling its porch light. What do you do? Hmm. And that's the setup for the adventure, and I love the way that it gives us a structured method to give us the important details that we need in order to run it, as well as giving us a sense of urgency. Now, one question that it asked under advantages sort of sticks out as kind of being weird to me, and that's the one about being a contact waiting for you out in the desert. And what sticks out about that is it's more of a destination, a goal, which is something that otherwise the adventure lacks. So I swapped this one out with a new advantage, an heirloom amulet that offers protection, and then I added a four 
fourth question of what the character is trying to reach. The first being that contact that's waiting for him in the desert, then a bus stop locker with money and fake IDs inside, and finally a remote private airfield with a plane fueled and ready to go. So my first suggestion here is to give the driver this question in order to give them an overall objective. You know, they're clearly trying to get away from something, but this gives the character a target that they're trying to get to. Next, the module gives us several follow-up questions depending on which of those options that the player chose. Uh, such as with their former boss and their goons, you could ask what type of work the player character did for this crime boss, uh, why they chose to abduct this little girl, the crime boss's daughter, information about the crime boss's various henchmen themselves, as maybe any of them might be able to draw on over to the character's side. These follow-up questions really do put in all the detail when it comes to the player picturing the threat, such as one henchman, Edgar. Edgar's the enforcer, and he has no empathy at all, man. He's like the freaking Terminator. But there's also Sammy, and Sammy is a good guy. Maybe I could sway him over to my side if I get the opportunity to talk to him. This not only paints a much clearer picture for the player when it comes to the threat, you know, giving him names and personalities rather than being just a bunch of nameless, faceless goons, but it gives the game master a whole lot to work with. The three locations each have details or suggestions that Gabe Masters can use, such as that decrepit house is the home to a nice family who offers to take care of them, but in truth they're part of some sexual torture cult who wants to sacrifice one of the characters and use them, uh, the other as their dark god's vessel, and they're going to invite some of their cultist neighbors over to help them out with all this. So when we had the house encounter in our game, they slipped some drugs and some sweet tea that they had offered to the characters, uh, saying that the sweet tea helped come up the taste of their nasty well water. And then one of the player characters, when they woke up, or the PC and the NPC woke up, they were naked and tied up in some sort of uh, dungeon altar room up in the attic, and they could hear the neighbors all arriving downstairs. So then the character had to quickly start trying to break out of their bonds before this entire ceremony could begin. In the old hotel, there's a blind man with a deaf dog, and he's out front playing guitar. Nothing is really said about this guy, but from one of my playthroughs, the bad guy showed up at this hotel and started asking this old man a few questions questions about where the player character was, if they'd seen the PC. And the dog started snarling and barking at the bad guy, so the bad guy shot this guy's dog. Then as the player character ended up in a firefight with the bad guys, the old man started playing this strange melody on his guitar, and then the dead and dying henchmen all rose up and started attacking the bad guys, you know, getting him back for whatever it was they had done to his dog, but also giving the PC a good opportunity to escape. My favorite part of the hotel is there's some sort of monster that's living in one of the rooms, and it might pay the player a visit if blood is spilled, sex is had, or drugs are consumed. But I like to think of this thing as some sort of slime monster, right, that's living down in the septic tanks. But it's more like housekeeping, really, right? You know, people are always making a mess in a hotel room, you know, missing the toilet or whatever it is. So, you know, it's down there and it smells the spilled blood or semen or tears or whatever it is, and it comes oozing up out of the toilet in the middle of the night crawls up on the player character sheets and starts licking that mess up. And then the player character, they wake up and they start freaking out and yelling at it, hitting it with chairs or something. And what they mistake for being the moans and the wails of the damned coming from it is really this thing just going like, whoa, 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 buddy, I meant no harm. I'm freaking housekeeping. You didn't leave a do not disturb sign on the toilet, so I thought it was okay. At least, you know, <laughs> that's how I like to think about that. I was planning on using the moth children for this myself, but none of my player characters ever stayed in this room when I ran it. Now, of course, once the adventure begins, it can go a lot of different ways. The game master might arrange it where the player character might eventually reach all three of the encounter locations. You know, really they're only selecting the first one, and then they're going to reach the second and the third one during the course of the adventure. Or they might encounter some completely new and different locations, such as an abandoned amusement park, a lone trailer out in the desert, or maybe some caves that they find out in the desert, and God knows what's inside of those things. Now, being an improv game, there are countless ways this adventure might go. But because I'm a game master that does like to prepare, even for improv heavy games that you shouldn't really be able to prepare for, here's how I did it. First, I printed out all the questions and I handed those to the player as I asked them, giving the player the opportunity to visually see what their options were. Next, I had three weapon cards that I printed out. 
unharmed, a bladed weapon, and a handgun. And then I handed those to the player depending on which assets they chose. Well, they always got unarmed, but you know, if they chose the handgun or if they chose the World War I bayonet. Then I prepared maps for the various locations. Now, for me, I went ahead and chose the supplement Labyrinths and Secret Chambers for this, but by no means do you need to use that. I just happened to have that supplement and it was made just for this. So it had both a motel and a hotel. So I'd ask the player which it was that they saw. Was it a decrepit hotel or a motel, and we'd use whichever one that they answered with. It also has two different gas stations with little diners. I ended up preferring the left one, so that's the one that I used, though it does lack a bathroom. And the little girl that was with the player character at the time, he had kidnapped her from his evil boss, she needed to use the bathroom when they arrived, so I went ahead and added a bathroom to this place. Wow, once again, you focus all your energy on the lack of bathrooms and adventures. You are nothing if not predictable. For the Sage Greenhouse, I didn't like any of the house maps that were in the book, so I simply went online and I printed one out from a real estate site. That way I had a realistic floor plan that was ready to use in case we needed it. For the advantages, especially the World War I bayonet that did something when blood was rubbed on it, I went ahead and I printed off the artifact advantage out of the Cult Divinity Lost Core book. Now exactly what this bayonet did when you rub blood on it, I had no idea, figured we'd you know, figure that out once we got there, but I wanted to go ahead and have a way that we could grab and go and use that if the player character wanted to use it. Now for the amulet, which I added myself as a potential advantage here, I ended up giving it a bit of a personality where it'd whisper things to the player character that was wearing it. Uh, sometimes they'd be like dark warnings, like, oh, you don't want to trust that guy, or they're up to no good. Or there would be dark observations about the morality of the character, sort of insults, you know, kind of what a bad person they were, and it would require stability checks as this thing was kind of slowly wearing them down. Now the adventure ends at whatever point that the Game Master decides is a good place for it to end, but the adventure encourages that it be some sort of difficult choice that the player has to make. Like the PC might have to surrender something valuable in order to escape, or they might choose to go out in a blaze of glory like Thelma and Louise or something. For one of my runs of this adventure, it ended with the player character just about dead. They only had one serious wound left for them, they had gotten really beaten up over the course of this adventure. And he woke up handcuffed in the back of an ambulance after he'd freed a bunch of girls who were being trafficked in the back of a semi. You know, saved the girls, but nearly died in the process of it. So he woke up on this gurney, and beside him was this 15-year-old girl. She was malnourished and dehydrated and banged up from when that semi-trailer had wrecked, and the player character knew that if he didn't escape from this, his former boss was going to find him and kill him and reclaim their daughter that the player character was trying to rescue from here. So looking around the back of this ambulance, the choice that he discovered he had was uh, he could use some of the medical tube tubes and implements to you know, turn a cut off his arm and then saw off his cuffed hand, overpower his driver, steal the ambulance, and get away, but not knowing where that five-year-old girl was, and he might not be able to save her at all. But because the PC also had chosen this amulet as an asset, I decided that the amulet was going to give him a second option of choices that he could do. So uh, it told him that he could, should rub his blood on the amulet, which was pretty easy for him to do because he was completely covered in his own blood, and then convinced this 15-year-old Filipino girl that he'd saved, like one of the 20 girls that he had saved, that he should you know, put this there, she should put this amulet on. And you know, if it did that, the amulet promised that he'd be able to escape from this. So the player character convinced the little girl to put this amulet on, and then to both of their horror, they realized that they were uh, swapping minds. So he woke up in the hospital, this time in this 15-year-old girl's body, and he managed to get out of his room, rescue the villain's five-year-old daughter, stole a car, and made his escape as the police were rushing inside the hospital because the, the man, who is now the body of this 15 year old girl was living in, uh, that the man that they had brought in had been executed and discovered in his room dead because the bad guy was out looking for him for revenge. So the PC managed to drive away as all the police were rushing inside, you know, you know, managed to save the girl, dark ending, but yeah, the player character did succeed. Yeah, go me, I won. You know, had I even fully realized, you know, what it was that that amulet was offering to do for me there, I think I might have opted to cut my hand off instead. Overall, I absolutely love this adventure. I love the fact that it gives us the tools to structure and improvise an adventure, giving us a sense of urgency, a threat, and goals, and usable suggestions about how to flush all of that stuff out. You know, more than a lot of other games that are all like, oh, I'll simply improvise it without really offering much more outside of the barest of plot hooks here. Now, the driver not only gives us a lot to work with, but it also works as a really good guide for improvising other games in the future, you know, teaching game masters a different way of approaching it. 
at you know, how they can structure an improvised game. Personally, I would love to see more of these. I'd love to see a whole freaking book of these things. You know, different ones showing different types of adventures, such as uh, ways of improvising an investigation. Like, you know, uh, there's a mystery afoot. You get to choose what mystery, and, you know, who did it and everything like that. Or ways of improvising a heist or maybe an escape from a, a dark secret laboratory somewhere, which, you know, not only makes for good grab-and-go adventures that game masters can run, but teaches the game master as well as the players, you know, those different types of adventures that they can improvise in the future. You can pick up a copy of Screams and Whispers as a PDF on Drive-Thru RPG. Physical copies you can pick up from Amazon, Modiphius, or direct from Helmgast. All physical editions come with a little coupon for a free PDF. If you simply want the driver by itself as a straight PDF, I stuck a link down below that Helmgast had shared for free. I wish it was on Drive-Thru RPG, but it's not, so go ahead and use the link below. But I strongly urge that Game Masters check this adventure out. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of our stuff, such as game reviews, a Game Master Toolbox, which we finally updated for the first time in freaking years, just hit that subscribe button. Until next time, gamers, you have a great day. You know... What I think would be pretty cool is if you ran this adventure for a few different players, right? A bunch of one-on-ones, but you always have them be where they're trying to get to the same destination, right? Like a house out in the middle of the desert or something. And then, once you've done all these as separate single adventures, you then bring all those player characters together because that was the backstory to your current campaign, right? So now all these characters, they all have some sort of experience with the supernatural. They all have an enemy, somebody that they were trying to run from, somebody it might still be chasing them, they all might be coming in with an NPC relation. I think that'd be pretty cool.